guys, welcome back to the channel, Lost Legend TV. I'm Ray, and today we are going to be doing a kill ranking on one of my favorite nightmare films of all time. This is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Three years had passed since the horrible abomination of Freddy's Dead had released. Me joining the majority of the population of nightmare fans, putting Freddy's Dead at the lowest tier possible. I think we can all agree that whether you love or hate the movie, it was not a proper send off for Freddy Krueger. In this point in the franchise, we had only seen Wes Craven's hands on it when he birthed Freddy Krueger from the original Nightmare film, and then in part 3, which he did not direct, and then this one. This will be Nightmare on Elm Street 7, but Wes Craven decided to do something completely different, which I completely adore. He said, fuck going back to canon, we're gonna go meta with this. To me, this is the birth of the metaverse, in a sense where, if you're a Scream fan or a Halloween fan, you know the meta-ness between them. How Scream has rules, and there is a lot of homages and tributes, and then a lot of metadata between the Halloween and the Scream franchise. This is in the same vein because Wes Craven decided to take these Hollywood characters to portray themselves, such as Heather Langenkamp, Robert England, Wes Craven himself, Robert Shea, which is one of the biggest producers in New Line, and then just the entity itself, Freddy Krueger. Wes Craven decided to reinvent Freddy and actually put Freddy in the real life scenario of Hollywood. I think the idea is genius. And even though this is one of the most highest ranked nightmare films, as far as critics and audience scores, it really didn't make that much money at the box office. It did make money, don't get it twisted. But my personal preference of this movie is I've always loved it. This is my favorite reincarnation of Freddy. This is my favorite version of Freddy, maybe just behind part two. And I fucking love the story. As a kid, even to this day, I've always had a huge crush on Heather Langenkamp. We get to see her really up close and personal. But not only her, like I said, we get the cast. We get Robert England back as Robert England. We get John Saxon back. The premise and production was sparked one of the greatest sequels of all time, in my opinion. This movie promptly follows Heather Langenkamp, her husband Chase, and her son Dylan. She is offered the role by Wes Craven and Robert Shea to reprise her role one last time as Nancy in order to defeat this entity that has taken the persona of Freddy. This is one of my top tier movies on the Nightmare franchise. However, it does have its downfalls. And this being a kill ranking, not a movie review, I'm not going to break this movie down for you, that's for another day. The kills alone in this, there's four kills. And I must say, one of the least favorable things about this movie is the kills for me. Coming in at my number one kill of this new Nightmare film, it is Julie's death. This hospital sequence is very reminiscent of the original Nightmare film and Tina's death. The reveal of when you see Freddy in this movie, the reinvention, like their enhanced makeup, the hat, the drench coat, the new knife where he has five blades instead of four. I cannot say enough on how much I love this version of fucking Freddy Krueger. And even though this is listed as an entity, and not necessarily Freddy Krueger himself. One story I've always said about this on the channel is, for two years in a row, I waited in line to meet Robert England for eight hours, standing in line, not moving, not going to go do nothing else. I was waiting in line to see Robert England, and twice in my life, I was like one or two people ahead, then Robert left. I was like, fuck! Again, I'm not mad about it. I know Robert, he's only human. And one question I've always wanted to ask Robert England is, who wins? Canon Freddy or New Nightmare Freddy? Obviously, he portrayed both. I will love his personal take on Canon Freddy versus his Metaverse Freddy in this scenario. But yeah, Julie's death scene in this hospital, I felt so bad for Julie. It was badass when Freddy rose up and he revealed the glove. And then she got dragged on the ceiling. She got stabbed. And she looks at Dylan and she's like, Help me. Freddy breaks her fucking neck with one finger and then she falls to the ground helpless. Her corpse is just sitting there fucking ugh, fucking limp dick. Very badass moment. I think this is the most memorial death of this film and really the only kind of creative one to be honest with you. One thing I hate about this movie is the practical effects and the kills. But I think this one really shines out just because it pays such an homage to the original Tina death that it's kind of just like a love letter to the fans. Alright, coming into my number two. It's Chase's death. Chase's death is also another callback to the original Nightmare on Elm Street film. In the sense of which Chase, which is Heather's husband in this film, is driving down the road and he falls asleep. We then see Freddy kind of play games with Chase. We see his glove 
rise up from the seat in like liquid form, very reminiscent to Nancy's bathroom scene, right? And he kind of flicks his crotch. He wakes up momentarily, scratches his crotch, and then he does his back off, right? And then driving down the road, Fred's just like, fuck it, just digs into his fucking chest. I'm like, oh my God, that has to be literally gut-wrenching. Not to make bad puns, but I think that actually fits. I'm kind of proud of myself for that. It's hard to look at these characters as nightmare characters in this film because they're actually playing their person themselves. And I'm sure it's an exaggerated version of themselves by having to identify your husband or just to be chased when you're having this fucking claw ripping out your fucking guts and then you wrap your fucking truck around the tree. That's gotta be an awful death. You know what I'm saying? Like that has to suck. But as a Nightmare fan, I really do appreciate the two callbacks that we have thus far. Coming down to number three is Terry's death or Terrence's death. We as the audience see this in a dream sequence, but I can only assume that it happened in the same vein as it did in the dream sequence because that's how the dream world works. That's how Freddy operates. That's how this entity is going to operate because he is taking on the persona of Freddy Krueger. Now there's only four kills in this movie and three and four work hand to hand. Now between Chuck and and Terry, I think Terry has a scarier death because in Terry's shoes, he witnessed Chuck die, right? I'm not going to explain Chuck's side of it until I get to number four. Seeing my best friend and co-worker there being savagely killed just all of a sudden, like the shock factor of him being stabbed in the throat by this brand new glove you've been working on for this production of Freddy, right? And then it chases me down, rips my fucking Achilles tendon off so where I fall down, and then stabs me in the chest. That has to be terrifying. Again, the shock factor alone, and then witnessing somebody else, their life being taken in front of your eyes, momentarily chased down by this creation that you helped create for this fictional entity or this character for this film. That takes a whole new literal nightmare of a death to me. And so that only leaves number four, which is Chuck's death. Chuck is my last because, because in this dream sequence or real life, what have you, I think Chuck had the easy way out in the sense of he was just working on a glove, getting ready for production, and he got stabbed in the throat when he died. He was probably oblivious to the situation. He probably thought it was just some mechanics gone wrong and just the pure shock factor of just boom, knife to the throat, claws to the throat, he's dead. Poor Chuck probably didn't even know what happened to him. You know what I'm saying? Chuck definitely had the easy way out between these three kills. So Chuck's coming in my number four. And just to be a good sport, I'm going to mention two more deaths that happened in this film. One being Rex the Dinosaur. There's a point in this movie where it is established that Rex at some point saved Dylan from this entity Freddy from coming to get him. Rex, I fucking salute you, man. Rex was a real one. He was a fucking gangster. And I'm assuming that the entity Freddy has to follow the rules of the character Freddy, right? Because one thing throughout this franchise is the rules between the dream realm and reality has always been blurred. And this movie really takes that pivotal point there and really expands it. So if a fictional teddy bear can stand guard against Dylan and take that L but keep Freddy away long enough so Dylan can wake up in peace one more time, good for you, man. Good for you. Rex is in the fucking Hall of Fame. And let's talk about Freddy's death in this. The entity Freddy's death. I'm going to reiterate and say this is my favorite looking Freddy of the franchise. He was scary. He is built. And there's just something about him, like his demeanor, his personality, his physique, his wardrobe. Everything is just so fucking darker. And I read in my research that this wardrobe right here in particular was going to be the original idea and the concept of the original Nightmare on Elm Street film. This is what Wes originally had in mind. So for him to finally bring that to light, I think was a genius move. There's a point in the movie where Heather has to deal with the death of her husband, Chase. Dylan is just becoming obsessed with Freddy Krueger. And towards the climax of the movie, this sequence is beautiful. It's my favorite part of this fucking movie. Heather has to decide because she's talking to John Saxon, right? But all of a sudden, like reality warps and he's playing Donald again, her father. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about, Nancy? And he is prompting Heather, and then to pull in the Wes Craven monologue, are you going to play Nancy one last time? That is the only way you're going to get rid of this entity, Freddy. And then once she says, yes, daddy, Freddy pops up from the bed like he did the original, just cuts that shit, and then he's coming out to Dylan. He's coming out to Heather. Beautiful stuff. 
Beautiful, fucking beautiful stuff, man. Now, the final climax of this film is different. It does not take place in the boiler room. Instead of a boiler room, the entity chose like this old, like Roman Empire ruins. The set pieces are cool. This dream world that the Entity Freddy resides in is really, really cool. Entity Freddy gets his tongue split open and then he gets thrown into a furnace and basically burned alive. And then he explodes. But just for a second, you see the actual Entity Freddy of his original form and that's just fucking scary. Up until Freddy vs. Jason the crossover, this is going to be the last Nightmare on Elm Street film that's canon. Just because like the remake takes place in a different timeline, right? And I guess you could argue that this one does as well, but this does address that Freddy's dad happened in this timeline. So, I thought it was a genius move. I thought it was a genius movie. I thought they did a great job. Bending reality like Wes did in this metaverse. Having Heather be Nancy one last time. Having John Saxon be Donna one last time. Having Robert Englund in the film being scared of Freddy like the entity Freddy and him having nightmares. Wes Craven is sitting there writing the script of everything that's happening. Now, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. There's this point where Dylan is climbing this tall ass playground thing, right? And that is referenced in the script. And at the very end, Heather is sitting there reading the opening lines of the opening lines in the movie of Wes Craven's Do Nightmare. The screenplay is just fucking brilliant. Like, I love this movie. The deaths could have been improved a lot. The visuals and practical effects could have been improved a lot. It's not perfect, but coming from Freddy's dad... It's a fucking masterpiece, man. It's a fucking masterpiece compared to that piece of shit. But that's it for this, guys. Thank you so much for taking part of your day to kick with me. You know I love you all. And I will see you next time where we explore the 2010 remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. I love all you guys. And until next time, adios.